Subscribe to futuremoneytrends.com today to receive our weekly wealth digests, expert interviews, and to read monthly investment and income producing ideas. Futuremoneytrends.com, smart money invested in future trends. Greetings and thank you for joining us at futuremoneytrends.com. I'm here at the Freedom Fest with Jim Rogers, he's a legendary investor and author of Street Smarts, Adventures on the Road and the Markets. Jim, thank you for joining us. I'm delighted to be here, Dan. Jim, uh, when you travel and you talk to a lot of, uh, a lot of smart people like yourself, you're, you're doing investments and you're talking about investments. Um, is there a sense that the recovery is sus sustainable in the United States? Well, this is the only time in recorded history that we've had all the major central banks in the world printing money and debasing their currencies at the same time. So there's a flood of artificial money floating around, and the people who are getting that money are having a good time and certainly making a lot of money. But overall, the situation is not improving. In fact, the situation is degenerating because there's debt piling up everywhere, every, uh, debt piling up everywhere, staggering amounts of printed money out there. This is going to end very, very badly. I'm not the only one who knows it, but at the moment, every, many people are having a good time. Um, do you feel comfortable buying stocks? I mean, is, is Bernanke kind of giving us a floor here? A floor? No, there's no such thing as a floor because when it ends, it's going to, the whole thing is going to collapse. It's going to be worse in 2008, 2009. But uh, I own some shares. I bought some shares this week, as a matter of fact. Uh, not, not in the U.S., but I own shares and I have bought more. But again, I'm very worried because I know it's going to end and end badly. So it's, for, for regular investors, they need to be more of a defensive position? rather than the idea just to buy stocks and hold them for the long term? They just need to be very alert. They need to not invest in anything unless they know a lot about it themselves. Don't listen to me or some guy you see on the internet. Only invest in what you know, but be very, very alert that once these people stop printing all this money, it's going to end and end badly. Or what will be even worse is the market may just say, we don't want your garbage paper anymore. And now that's harder to, de to detect and to discern, but when, if it happens that way, Boy, it's going to be real, real mess. What would, what would cause them to stop printing? Because if the party is working for everybody who's in power and everybody who's got a lot of money, why would, they, why would they ever stop? Well, even on the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank in America, half the people know that this ultimately is not going to be good. You read the minutes and you see that half of them are already getting very worried about it. What would cause them to stop is I'm not the only person who knows this is madness. They know it's going to have to stop someday. The Federal Reserve has already quadrupled its balance sheet in just five, six years. I mean, we'll quadruple it again in the next five or six years. It cannot work. It cannot happen that way. Or you and I and everybody else watching this are going to say, we don't want, <coughs> we don't want your garbage paper anymore. Uh, for the commodities, uh, for gold, for example, there's been a lot of reports that it's now being sold at spot below the production cost. Um, how does that fare for a commodity? Is that, does that mean silver or gold is now a, a, a good buy because of that situation? Well, I don't think it's being sold below production cost. It may be being sold production cost for some mines, but most mine, many mines are still can produce gold at cheaper than current prices. But, <coughs> but Dan, uh, commodities can, can sell below the cost of production. I've, often you've seen in history that commodities sell below the cost of production for extended periods of time. It costs a lot to close a mine, for instance. It costs a lot of money to open a mine. So people are very reluctant to close mines, whether it's copper or gold or whatever. Likewise, oil fields, likewise farms. People continue normally to produce for a while at least below the cost of production. Now eventually, it, comes to an end. They just give up. They have to give up. But that's not below the cost of production, not for most people, not yet. Uh, your new book, uh, what can investors and uh, people who read it expect to gain from it? Well, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, had a few triumphs. They'll learn how it all happened, uh, some of the things that I've learned about life and markets and the world and how it's all pulled together. You've, you've made a lot of money. You've traveled the world. I mean, what's, what's next for you? I've got two little girls, that's what's next. I was always very much against children for all my life. I thought children were a waste of time and money and energy. I felt sorry for people who had children. I was never going to do anything so foolish as to have children. But then I did it late in life, very late in life. But boy, it's a lot of fun. It was, I was wrong. I hope everybody watching this will go home. If they haven't had children, go home and get on with it. Start having children. Take a day off. Or don't take a day off these days, but go home for lunch have a lunch hour or something, because children are a lot of fun, and that's, that's definitely my, my next adventure.
Have you thought about your their their education? I don't know how old they are, but as far as their education is, uh, not so much their private school or public school or but as far as just their world view have you thought about how you're going to teach them about the economy and how things are well i talk about all that in the book and it's interesting because many people keep telling me that this is the best book i've done which is a great surprise to me sort of a shock almost uh, yes I've, I've moved them to asia i want them to grow up in asia knowing asia uh, they were in their lifetimes asia will be the most important part of the world they both speak um, mandarin fluent mandarin mandarin chinese like natives so no, I'm, I'm trying to expose them and prepare them for the 21st century. Just because they know Asia and speak Mandarin will not make them successful, but at least it will give them a couple of skills which many other people will not have. Um, in closing, just about life success, a lot of people, it is achievable to become wealthy, a millionaire, but then there's, then there's people like you who really you know, hit it out of the park when it comes to building wealth. Do you have any advice for people as far as what was something that you focused on or did? Is, is there anything in your life that you can share with somebody that they could also use to help their life? Well, just figure out what you love the most and pursue that as your passion because that's the only way you're going to be successful and that's the only way you're going to be happy even if you're not successful. I mean, if you want to be a gardener, become a gardener because if you're good at it, Someday you'll have a chain of garden shops all across America. You'll be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Your professors, your teachers, your family will all say, we knew you'd be a good gardener. So pursue what you love. That's the only way you're going to be happy and the only way you're going to be successful. So it's, it's safe to assume outside of family, investing the markets, that is what you love. Oh, yeah, that's what I, yeah, I was, uh, I couldn't believe they'd pay me to do it. I didn't know anything about it. Then I stumbled onto Wall Street with a summer job. I couldn't believe they would pay me. This was my whole passion, this whole thing of knowing what was going on in the world, and trying to predict the future. And I found a place that that's what they wanted you to do. They'd pay you, and if you did it well, they'd pay you a lot. I was stunned. <laughs> I used to think I was going to go to law school, business school, medical school. Boy, would that have been a mistake. Yeah. Jim Rogers, author of Street Smarts, Adventures on the Road and on the Markets. Thank you so much for joining us.